at first out of the busy hum of mind, as if from a loud thronged market into a cave, by an inward moment's magic she had come. A stark hushed emptiness became herself, her mind unvisited by the voice of thought, stared at a wide deep's dumb infinity. Her heights receded, her depths behind her closed, all fled away from her and left her blank. But when she came back to herself of thought, once more she was a human thing on earth, a lump of matter, a house of closed sight, a mind compelled to think out ignorance, a life force pressed into a camp of works and the material world her limiting field. Amazed like one unknowing, she sought her way out of the tangle of man's ignorant past that took the surface person for the soul. Then a voice spoke that dwelt on secret heights. For man thou seekst, not for thyself alone. Only if God assumes the human mind and puts on mortal ignorance for his cloak and makes himself the dwarf with triple stride, can he help man to grow into the God? As man disguised the cosmic greatness works and finds the mystic inaccessible gate and opens the immortal's golden door, Man, human, follows in God's human steps. Accepting his darkness, thou must bring to him light. Accepting his sorrow, thou must bring to him bliss. In matter's body, find thy heaven-born soul. Then Savitri surged out of her body's wall and stood a little span outside herself and looked into her subtle being's depths and in its heart as in a lotus bud divined her secret and mysterious soul. At the dim portal of the inner life that bars out from our depths the body's mind and all that lives but by the body's breath she knocked and pressed against the ebony gate. The living portal groaned with sullen hinge. Heavily reluctant, it complained inert against the tyranny of the spirit's touch. A formidable voice cried from within, Back, creature of earth, lest tortured and torn thou die. A dreadful murmur rose like a dim sea. The serpent of the threshold hissing rose. A fatal guardian hood with monstrous coils. The hounds of darkness growled with jaws agape. And trolls and gnomes and goblins scowled and stared. And wild beast roarings filled the blood with fear, and menace muttered in a dangerous tongue. Unshaken her will pressed on the rigid bars, the gate swung wide with a protesting jar. The opponent powers withdrew the dreadful guard, her being entered into the inner world. In a narrow passage, the subconscious gate, she breathed with difficulty and pain and strove to find the inner self concealed in sense. Into a dense of subtle matter packed, a cavity filled with a blind mass of power, 
an opposition of misleading gleams, a heavy barrier of unseeing sight, she forced her way through body to the soul. Across a perilous borderline she passed, where life dips into the subconscious dusk or struggles from matter into chaos of mind, a swarm with elemental entities and fluttering shapes of vague half-bodied thought and crude beginnings of incontinent force. At first a difficult narrowness was there, a press of uncertain powers and drifting wills, for all was there but nothing in its place. At times an opening came, a door was forced. She crossed through spaces of a secret self and trod in passages of inner time. At last she broke into a form of things, a start of finiteness, a world of sense. But all was still confused, nothing self-found. Soul was not there, but only cries of life. A thronged and clamorous air environed her. A horde of sounds defied significance. A dissonant clash of cries and contrary calls. A mob of visions broke across the sight. A jostle sequence lacking sense and sweet. Feelings pushed through a packed and burdened heart. Each force did separate in consequent way, but cared for nothing but its ego's drive. A rally without key of common will, thought stared at thought and pulled at the taut brain, as if to pluck the reason from its seat and cast its corpse into life's wayside drain. So might forgotten lie in nature's mud, abandoned the slain sentinel of the soul. So could life's power shake from it mind's rule. Nature renounced the spirit's government and the bare elemental energies make of the sense a glory of boundless joy, a splendor of ecstatic anarchy, a revel mighty and mad of utter bliss. This was the sense's instinct, void of soul, or when the soul sleeps, hidden void of power, but now the vital godhead wakes within and lifts the life with the supernal touch. But how shall come the glory and the flame if mind is cast away into the abyss? For body without mind has not the light, the rapture of spirit sense, the joy of life. All then becomes subconscious tenebrous. Inconscience puts its seal on nature's page, or else a mad disorder whirls the brain, hosting along a ravaged nature's roads, a chaos of disordered impulses, in which no light can come, no joy, no peace. This state now threatened, this she pushed from her, as if in a long endless tossing street, one driven mid a trampling hurrying crowd, hour after hour she trod without release, holding by her will the senseless mute at bay. Out of the dreadful press she dragged her will and fixed her thought upon the Saviour name. Then all grew still and empty, she was free. A large deliverance came, a vast calm space, a while she moved through a blank tranquility of naked light 
from an invisible sun, a void that was a bodiless happiness, a blissful vacuum of nameless peace. But now a mightier danger's front drew near, the press of bodily mind, the inconscience brood of aimless thought and will had fallen from her. Approaching loomed a giant head of life, ungoverned by mind or soul, subconscient, vast. It tossed all power into a single drive. It made its power a might of dangerous seas. Into the stillness of her silent self, into the whiteness of its muse of space, a spate, a torrent of the speed of life, broke like a wind-lashed, driven mob of waves, racing on a pale floor of summer sand. It drowned its banks, a mountain of climbing waves. Enormous was its vast and passionate voice. It cried to her listening spirit as it ran, demanding God's submission to chainless force. A deaf force calling to a status dumb, a thousand voices in a muted vast, it claimed the heart support for its clutch at joy, for its need to act, the witness soul's consent for its lust of power, her neutral being seal. Into the wideness of her watching self, it brought a grandiose gust of the breath of life. Its torrent carried the world's hopes and fears, all lives, all natures, dissatisfied hungry cry, and the longing all eternity cannot fill. It called to the mountain secrecies of the soul, and the miracle of the never-dying fire. It spoke to some first inexpressible ecstasy, hidden in the creative beat of life. Out of the nether unseen deeps it tore its lure, and magic of disordered bliss. Into earth light poured its maze of tangled charm and heady draught of nature's primitive joy and the fire and mystery of forbidden delight drunk from the world's like by those bottomless well and the honey-sweet poison wine of lust and death but dreamed a vintage of glory of life's gods, and felt a celestial rapture's golden sting. The cycles of the infinity of desire, and the mystique that made an unrealized world, wider than the known, and closer than the unknown, in which hunt forever the hounds of mind and life, Tempted a deep dissatisfied urge within to long for the unfulfilled and ever far and make this life upon a limiting earth a climb towards summits vanishing in the void, a search for the glory of the impossible. It dreamed of that which never has been known. It grasped at that which never has been won. It chased into an Elysian memory the charms that flee from the heart's soon lost delight. It dared the force that slays, the joys that hurt, the imaged shape of unaccomplished things, and the summons to a Circean transmuting dance and passion's tenancy of the courts of love, and the wild beasts ramp and romp with beauty and life. It brought its cry and surge of opposite powers, its moments of the touch of luminous plains, its flame ascensions and sky-pitched vast attempts, 
its fiery towers of dream built on the winds its sinking stores the darkness and the abyss its honey of tenderness its sharp wine of hate its changes of sun and cloud of laughter and tears its bottomless danger pits and swallowing gulfs its fear and joy and ecstasy and despair its occult wizardries its simple lines and great communions and uplifting moves its faith in heaven its intercourse with hell these powers were not blunt with the dead weight of earth they gave ambrosia taste and poison sting there was an ardor in the gaze of life that saw heaven blue in the gray air of night the impulses godward soared on passion's wings minds quick paced thoughts floated from their high necks a glowing splendor as of an irished mane a parure of pure intuition's light its flame foot gallop they could imitate minds voices mimicked inspiration stress its ictus of infallibility its speed and lightning heaven leap of the gods a trenchant blade that shore the nets of doubt its sword of discernment seemed almost divine yet all that knowledge was a borrowed sun's the forms that came were not heaven's native births an inner voice could speak the unreal's word its puissance dangerous and absolute could mingle poison with the wine of god on these high shining backs falsehood could ride truth lay with delight in errors passionate arms gliding down stream in a blithe gilded bar she edged her ray with a magnificent lie here in life's nether realms all contraries meet truth stares and does her works with bandaged eyes and ignorance is wisdom's patron here those galloping hooves in their enthusiast speed could bear to a dangerous intermediate zone where death walks wearing a robe of deathless life or they enter the valley of the wandering gleam when captives or victims of the specious ray souls trapped in that region never can escape agents not masters they serve life's desires toiling forever in the snare of time their bodies born out of some nahil's womb and snare the spirit in the moment's dreams then perish vomiting the mortal soul out of matter's belly into the sink of naught yet some uncaught unslain can verily pass carrying truth's image in the sheltered heart pluck knowledge out of errors screening grip break paths to the blind walls of little self then travel on to reach a greater life all this streamed past her and seemed to her vision sight as if around a high and voiceless isle a clamor of waters from far unknown hills swallowed its narrow banks in crowding waves and made a hungry world of white wild foam hastening a dragon with a million feet its foam and cry a drunken giant's din tossing a mane of darkness into god's sky it ebbed receding into a distant roar then smiled again 
a large and tranquil air. Blue heaven, green earth, partners of beauty's reign, lived as of old, companions in happiness, and in the world's heart laughed the joy of life. All now was still, the soil shone dry and pure. Through it all she moved not, plunged not in the vain waves. Out of the vastness of the silent self, life's clamor fled. Her spirit was mute and free. Then journeying forward through the self's wide hush, she came into a brilliant ordered space. Their life dwelt parked in an armed tranquility. A chain was on her strong insurgent heart. Came to the modesty of a measured pace, she kept no more her vehement stride and rush. She had lost the careless majesty of her muse and the ample grandeur of her regal force. Curbed were her mighty pomps, her splendid waist, sobered the revels of her backhand play, cut down were her squanderings in desire's bazaar, coerced her despot's will, her fancy's dance, a cold stolidity bound the riot of sense. A royalty without freedom was her lot. The sovereign throned obeyed her ministers. Her servants' mind and sense governed her house. Her spirit's bounds they cast in rigid lines, and guarding with a phalanx of armored rule, the reason's balanced reign kept order and peace. Her will lived closed in adamant walls of law. Coerced was a force by chains that feigned to adorn. Imagination was prisoned in a fort, her wanton and licentious favorite. Reality's poise and reason's symmetry were set in its place, sentineled by marshaled fact. They gave to the soul for throne a bench of law, for kingdom a small world of rule and line. The age's wisdom, shriveled to scoliest lines, shrank pattern into a copybook device. The spirit's almighty freedom was not here. A schoolman mind had captured life's large space, but chose to live in bare and paltry rooms, parked off from the too vast dangerous universe, fearing to lose its soul in the infinite. Even the idea's ample sweep was cut into a system chained to fixed pillars of thought or riveted to matters solid ground, or else the soul was lost in its own heights, obeying the ideal's high-browed law, thought based a throne on unsubstantial air, disdaining earth's flat triviality. It barred reality out to live in its dreams, or all stepped into a systemed universe. Life's empire was a managed continent, its thoughts an army ranked and disciplined. Uniformed, they kept the logic of their fixed place at the bidding of the trained centurion mind. Or each stepped into its station like a star, or marched through fixed and constellated heavens, or kept its feudal rank among its peers, in the sky's unchanging cosmic hierarchy. Or like a hybrid maiden with chaste eyes, forbidden to walk, unveiled the public ways, 
She must in close secluded chambers move, her feeling in cloisters live or garden parks. Life was consigned to a safe level path. It dared not tempt the great and difficult heights or climb to be neighbor to a lonely star or skirt the danger of the precipice or tempt the foam-curled breaker's perilous laugh. Adventure's lyrist, danger's amateur. Or into her chamber call some flaming god, Or leave the world's bounds, and where no limits are, Meet with the heart's passion, the adorable, Or set the world ablaze with the inner fire. A chastened epithet in the prose of life, she must fill with colour just her sanctioned space, not break out of the cabin of the idea, nor trespass into rhythms too high or vast. Even when it soared into ideal air, thought's flight lost not itself in heaven's blue. It drew upon the skies a patterned flower, of disciplined beauty and harmonic light. A temperate, vigilant spirit governed life. Its acts were tools of the considering thought, too cold to take fire and set the world ablaze, or the careful reasons, diplomatic moves, testing the means to a prefigured end or at the highest pitch some calm will's plan, or a strategy of some high command within to conquer the secret treasures of the gods, or win for a masked king some glorious world, not a reflex of the spontaneous self, an index of the being and its moods, a winging of conscious spirit, a sacrament, of life's communion with the still supreme or its pure movement on the eternal's road. Or else for the body of some high idea, a house was built with two close-fitting bricks. Action and thought cemented made a wall of small ideals limiting the soul. Even meditation mused on a narrow seat, and worship turned to an exclusive God, to the universal in a chapel prayed, whose doors were shut against the universe, or kneeled to the bodiless impersonal, a mind shut to the cry and fire of love, a rational religion dried the heart, it planned a smooth life's act with ethics rule, or offered a cold and flameless sacrifice. The sacred book lay on its sanctified desk, wrapped in interpretation silken strings. A credo sealed up its spiritual sense. Here was a quiet country of fixed mind, Dear life no more was all, nor passion's voice. A cry of sense had sunk into a hush. Soul was not there, nor spirit, but mind alone. Mind claimed to be the spirit and the soul. The spirit saw itself as form of mind, lost itself in the glory of the thought a light that made invisible the sun. Into a firm and settled space she came, where all was still and all things kept their place. Each found what it had sought and knew its aim. All had a final, last stability. There one stood forth who bore authority on an important brow 
and held a rod. Command was incarnate in his gesture and tone. Tradition's petrified wisdom carved his speech. His sentences severed the oracle. Traveller or pilgrim of the inner world, fortunate art thou to reach our brilliant air, flaming with thought's supreme finality. O aspirant to the perfect way of life, here find it, rest from search and live at peace. Earth is the home of cosmic certainty. Here is the truth. God's harmony is here. Register thy name in the book of the elite, admitted by the sanction of the few. Adopt thy station of knowledge, thy post in mind, thy ticket of order, draw in life's bureau, and praise thy faith that made thee one of ours. All here, docketed and tied, the mind can know, all schemed by law that God permits to life. This is the end and there is no beyond. Here is the safety of the ultimate wall. Here is the clarity of the sword of light. Here is the victory of a single truth. Here burns the diamond of flawless bliss. A favorite of heaven and nature live, but to the too satisfied and confident sage, Savitri replied, casting into his world, sight's deep release, the heart's questioning inner voice. For here the heart spoke not, only clear daylight of intellect reigned here, Limiting, cold, precise. Happy are they who in this chaos of things, This coming and going of the feet of time, Can find the single truth, the eternal law. Untouched they live by hope and doubt and fear. Happy are men anchored on fixed belief In this uncertain and ambiguous world, or who have planted in the heart's rich soil one small grain of spiritual certitude. Happier to stand on faith as on a rock, but I must pass, leaving the ended search, truth's rounded outcome firm, immutable, and this harmonic building of world fact, this ordered knowledge of apparent things. Here I can stay not, for I seek my soul. None answered in that bright, contented world, or only turn on their accustomed way, astonished to hear questioning in that air, or thoughts that could still turn to the beyond. But some murmured passers by from kindred spheres, each by his credo judged. The thought she spoke. Who, who then is this who knows not that the soul is a least gland or a secretion's fault, disquieting the sane government of the mind, disordering the function of the brain, or a yearning lodged in nature's mortal house, or dream whispered in man's cave of hollow thought, who would prolong his brief unhappy term or cling to living in a sea of death. But others, nay, it is a spirit she seeks, a splendid shadow of the name of God, a formless luster from the ideal's realm. The spirit is the holy ghost of mind, but none has touched its limbs or seen its face. Each soul is the great father's crucified son. Mind is that soul's one parent, its conscious cause, the ground on which trembles a brief passing light, mind, soul creator of the apparent world.
all that is here is part of our own self our minds have made the world in which we live another with mystic and unsatisfied eyes who loved his slain belief and mourned its death is there one left who seeks for a beyond and still the path be found opened the gate so she fared on across her silent self to a road she came thronged with an ardent crowd who sped brilliant fire-footed sunlight-eyed racing to reach the world's mysterious wall and pass through mask doorways into outer mind where the light comes not nor the mystic voice messengers from a subliminal greatness is guests from the cavern of the secret soul into dim spiritual somnolence they break or shed wide wonder on our waking self ideas that haunt us with their radiant tread dreams that are hints of unborn reality strange goddesses with deep pooled magical eyes strong wind-haired gods carrying the harps of hope great moon-hued visions gliding through gold air aspiration sun dream head and star carved limbs emotions making common heart sublime and savitri mingling in that glorious crowd yearning to the spiritual light they bore longed once to hasten like them to save god's world but she reined back the high passion in her heart she knew that first she must discover her soul only who save themselves can others save in contrary sense she faced life's riddling truth they carrying the light to suffering men hurried with eager feet to the outer world her eyes were turned towards the eternal source outstretching her hands to stay the throng she cried o happy company of luminous gods reveal who know the road that i must tread for surely that bright quarter is your home to find the birthplace of the occult fire and the deep mansion of my secret soul one answered pointing to a silence dim on a remote extremity of sleep in some far background of the inner world o savitri from thy hidden soul we come we are the messengers the occult gods who help men's drab and heavy ignorant lives to wake to beauty and the wonder of things touching them with glory and divinity in evil we light the deathless flame of good and hold the torch of knowledge on ignorant roads we are thy will and all men's will towards light o human copy and disguise of god who seeks the deity thou keepest hid and livest by the truth thou hast not known follow the world's winding highway to its source there in the silence you have ever reached thou shalt see the fire burning on the bare stone and the deep cavern of thy secret soul then savitri following the great winding road came where it dwindled into a narrow path trod only by rare wounded pilgrim feet a few bright forms emerged from unknown depths and looked at her with calm immortal eyes there was no sound to break the brooding hush one felt the silent nearness of the soul